If you are among the millions, truly, of Americans who struggle with your weight, the first thing you know is that you're not alone. Just look at the numbers. What you might not know is there is a reason why you might not be losing the weight, and it's not your fault. Dr. Jaime Ponce is here. He is with CHI Memorial Metabolic and Bariatric Care. Good to have you. Good morning. How are I you? I think that's going to be good news for a lot of people to hear. You say obesity, not just being a few pounds overweight, obesity is a disease. Correct. So uh, it is interesting, you know, obesity, when it becomes more of a chronic problem, is considered a disease. The American Medical Association has declared obesity as a disease in 2013, made it very clear stated, and many health organizations recognize obesity as a disease. So I think this is important for the public to know that sometimes genetics play a role in which uh, people that suffer from obesity they don't have control, their metabolism works less, you know, they store more calories, it's more difficult for them to control the hunger. So much so it's a third of the population, is cons uh, the adult population? Exactly, and so in the United States, about 39% of the, of the adults are considered to be suffering from obesity, which is, which is pretty devastating because obesity doesn't come with a consequences. There's a long list of medical problems. You probably have heard about type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, bone and joint disease, and all those problems are associated to obesity. And then it, it becomes also the social disability, you know, it's more difficult to do outdoor activities or even perform well in their jobs because of their obesity, you know, it's more difficult to do exercise. Right. So can I play devil's advocate for a minute? Uh, you mentioned that in our country we have this high rate. I imagine if you go outside of the U.S., those numbers shift a little bit. So are you saying that because obesity is a disease, that takes a patient with no, puts them up with no responsibility, or is it still a 50-50 no, relationship? No, it still is a responsibility, but um, obesity, when you have the genetic component, it doesn't matter where you are, you have a tendency to store more calories. Now, there are some environments in which those genes can express better. So if we have here the wrong environment, which we drive a lot, a right. lot of internet, a lot of sitting down, a lot of fast food, rich in calories, inexpensive, all those things makes us be more prone to become more overweight. Mm -hmm. uh, in other countries, and you see um, first world countries, they also have high percentage of obesity. You see right. North America, Australia, Middle East has a lot of obesity, and Europe, you know, those countries tend to have more obesity. Okay, so I mentioned this is going to be good news for a lot of people. They hear you talking and they say, he's the doctor for me. I've been struggling because people get depressed, don't they, Correct. Dr. Ponce, with yeah, just being told, watch what you eat? There's a high incidence of depression and people that suffer from obesity because there's just, it's just they try and try and try and things don't work. Right. Uh, when somebody has significant overweight, you know, we're talking about 100 pounds above their ideal weight, 97% of the times they're going to fail on diets and exercise and any other support therapy. And so for those patients that have severe obesity, we have surgery. Surgery has become very safe. It's probably the best tool that they can have because surgery not only makes their stomach smaller, but it also controls the hunger, controls how their metabolism works. It's amazing how the surgery changes a lot of these things in the body. Mm -hmm. And patients actually have better control on what they want to do. It is true that they also need input on dietitian, exercise, psychology support, because all those things are components of how they will maintain their weight loss over time. Okay. Now there are other segment of patients that may be struggling because they already try a lot of diets and exercise and even medications and they still struggling with keeping the weight off but they're not quite at that level they're probably 30 to 80 pounds above their ideal weight okay so we have other things that are not necessarily surgery but they're endoscopic procedures endoscopic procedures are done under sedation with the scope uh, in those cases, sometimes we can put a balloon inside the stomach. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's a balloon that can be inflated with fluid. Makes you feel like you're not Makes you hungry. feel fuller. That, in association with good diet and exercise, can help them to lose weight much better. Okay, to the point, though, of it being to control how much you eat, all of us probably know people who struggle with their weight, but they don't eat a lot. So to your, what you said earlier about the metabolic Correct. concern, does that mean that it tends to run in families? If you're a parent yeah. who's highly overweight, should you be concerned about your child and when do you get intervention for that's, them? That's a very good question. So it's being clearly identified that there's some families that have more genetic influence, meaning that if both parents have the genetic influence and have their kids, you know, all the family is gonna become 
much overweight than some other families, even without eating as much, even with trying to do exercise, you know, they still tend to store more calories. And those people are going to struggle a little bit more. Yes, they're going to require more help, but if they get to the point that they have gained so much weight, it's very difficult for them to do it without the help. So that's when surgery comes to help. I'm sure that by the time people come to your office, they often say that you're the third or fourth doctor or they've struggled with this for a long time. Are patients afraid almost to step out and get help? Yes, there's, there's a lot of people that have tried many times. You know, they come with a long list of things. They have tried Weight Watcher, Jamie Craig, different diets, exercise, physician supervised weight loss programs, and they lose and gain, lose and gain. Eventually, these people have gained so much that it's more difficult to do activity and exercise. They're afraid of um, going to something as dramatic as they think surgery is mm -hmm. and be the last option and, and it may not work. And so we have to give them a lot of support and we also have to have a good understanding that they're ready to take that step. Because when you do surgery on a patient, you want to make sure that they're not only psychologically ready, ready to make some lifestyle changes, you know, ready to make those th things and surgery will help them to do that. Before I let you go, do you have patients who have undergone a surgery or the balloon procedure and come back to you and say thank you? Yes, all, you know, one of the comments that we hear all the time uh, from patients is that the only thing that they regret is why they didn't do it earlier. You know, they really feel happier, you know, at one year after surgery, they feel so excited about their new way of looking. They feel more active, more energetic. They can do things that they could not do before. So it's, it's very impressive. So you too can say, I'm glad that I didn't put things off any longer. Let me go ahead and give you his contact information on Shallowford Road. Their phone number, very easy to remember, 899-1000 and online at ChattanoogaBariatrics.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.